Good day, everybody. Brian here from uh, quantlabsnet.com. I have posted uh, videos in a while, but uh, this one was interesting from my usual source. Thanks to him for sending it from efinancialcareers.com. Um, I want to talk about C++ interviews um, and some of the harder questions. Uh, I used to be pretty good at C because it was a lot easier. They didn't have object-oriented programming. But here, it's gotten a lot more complicated as a language. And so I'll put the uh, link in the uh, description to the blog and so on and so forth. The interesting thing is, is that we have here the standard uh, C++ interview. I've come across um, a post I saw somewhere, I don't remember where, but uh, somebody in Hong Kong got an interview with Renaissance Technologies. They were forewarned that the interview would focus on Linux kernel and memory in C++. So they were given a, a forewarning on what the interview was about. But the complicated part when it comes to C++, add in Python as well, <clears throat> and then you have Linux itself, which most of the HFT shops run on. It's uh, interesting that uh, uh, C++ has gotten become a very complicated beast. No doubt about that. So here you can see coding challenges. So there's the uh, the t online tests, I can't remember the name, Leet, Leet, Code, and all that. And then we have this new site uh, that's getting up there as well as Wall Street CPP. Uh, this seems to be growing, uh, fairly new, newly launched, um, that I knew about a while back. Um, <clears throat> so there's a bunch of questions out there uh, being asked uh, to candidates when it comes to C jobs, let alone trying to get and interviews and other cool enchilada. Anyway, so we have questions on memory pool, vector duplicates, thread pool, safe, safe vector. Um, and then you get into things like uh, you can write asynchronous code using coroutines, full, su full support in C23 uh, or senders, which don't. I mean, if you're not having your mind bent already, um, this is a very difficult area to move into, obviously, but pays very well if you know it and master it. 12 important uh, coding techniques for C++, according to ex-Deutsche Bank director Paul Billicon. And there's a lot of people out there that are now trying to be experts to help you get a career in this, especially in the high-frequency trading shops. I avoid it like the play because I don't want to be just another person when I'm really not <clears throat> a C++ programmer per se. You know, maybe in a year from now, maybe, uh, along with more of the complicated um, coding techniques. But I'm going to show you what I'm doing uh, on the website, quantlabsnet.com, in a minute. So hang tight. So then we get into questions about lock-free programming. Um, and the for true challenge, attempt question four, which is lock-free programming. The solution requires persistent data structures which can significantly test your ability to decrease memory usage. This is typical use case for high-frequency trading shops, no doubt about that. Um, so again, you get into the meta template programming, which a lot of the uh, the shops use. So here they talk about open-ended subject matter questions. Now, this is the key here, open-ended subject matter. This could be a, a plethora of areas to dive into. This is a confusing part. And then the role of FPGAs in HFT. I put up a video on what Optifer is doing uh, as an example when it comes to their overall C++ ecosystem and where the uh, FPGA uh, comes in in that operation. Um, there's a video on that. I put up a video, a post on that on my website. Um, how would you handle clock synchronization and distributed HFT? RAA, which is uh, resource acquisition and initialization, that's basically a coding standard. It's been in place for quite a long time in C++. And what strategies can be used to minimize latency in HFT systems? Um, so that in itself strategy, then you also should be fairly familiar with the trading strategies as well. As I've always hinted 
for a good couple of weeks now since the uh, futures and options course has been out. So you got to know that stuff as well, because that course will reveal how um, uh, HFT shops are taking advantage of what's out there in terms of the trading and the markets. So here's how they deliver it. You might be uh, prepared uh, for a take-home project, a growing trend for firms to give developers more complex tasks, complete over the weekend, and prove their ability without extreme time pressure. So some used to accuse that, that a lot of the smaller firms would do that um, when it comes to students coming out of really intelligent schools, let's say like MIT, and then they'd use that code as a way to build their platforms and their trading systems. So I don't know if that's going on with the larger uh, trading firms because they're not going to use it because they already have an infrastructure already in place. And they may, I don't see they're going to rip that off. It's from a billion dollar high frequency trading system. Um, so again, the reference to Wall Street CPP, you could face uh, during your application, according to design a system to detect and respond to market, making opportunities across multiple venues and microseconds. So right there is where you got to know the, um, the, the, the general trading for futures and options. I mean, that's hardcore right there. So that would be typically thrown at you. And just remember, there's a lot of HFT shops have laid people off. So you're going to be competing against people that have already got probably years upon years in an HFT trading shop uh, as who knows what their level is in C++ at that shop. Design, design a distributed cash for sharing market data across trading applications. And again, that is part of that Optiver video I went over. Um it's difficult doesn't mean you don't have the competition. Survey in September revealed the top scoring developers on Leak Code were more likely to code in C++ than any other language. And that's true because C++ is probably the most challenging language out there to, to really know. Um, to be a top level coder, obviously you got to know uh, low latency, know the Linux kernel, know how to properly uh, take advantage and be highly optimized for um, for uh linux kernel linux related it's a very tough area to get into not saying can't be done uh so there's all this stuff to look at so right now um we could take a look at this guy uh coding messiah which you can see there um he's interesting now uh since around december he's been um focusing on doing call live in and asking people just general uh, programming questions. A lot of them get blown out because they don't know the basics of just C programming, Python programming, or even C++ programming. And he has made some valid points that you're, if you want to get in this field, you really got to know C inside out. And um, that's where to start and then move into both Python and C++ from there. Because C is such a, bare bones language doesn't have a lot of frameworks to work with outside of the standard turning him in richie uh, framework so it's a good language to know and master and then move on to the other more complicated languages like c plus plus in itself so that's a tip for me but that's an interesting channel now to watch is uh yeah this channel here um okay so what am i doing to help people out um there's a couple of things. If you want to know at quantlabsnet.com, go into the learn tab and in there you'll find that I've got a C++ HFT ebook out now. A lot of people have downloaded it, just opt in, you'll get it. And um, there's that way to get that um, uh, as well. And uh, there uh, it talks about the infrastructure, what a lot of HFT shops use. Um, so that's an interesting um, thing to learn. The new thing I've added, if you go under the forum, so I've started this a few days ago. Two things is trading questions and answers and tech question, uh, tech questions and answers. So if you go under here under tech question and answer, what I'm doing now is I'm actually putting in very hardcore um, questions about things like building machine learning mod from scratch in Python, C Lang. UMG, C++ code visualization, uh, the book, a new one, sixth edition, C++ primer coding, uh, AI-powered image search engine, Olama, 
and so on and the like there, automating chat GPT, chat deletion with Python, and so on and so forth. So on, this is now going up on a daily basis. I've now expanded out the articles. So this one's on Sphinx. Uh, you can see here, it's pretty, pretty big. Um, some have actual coding examples as well. Um, you can see if this is one of them. So that I'm starting to put out there. Now, the thing is, is that um, you can actually comment. You can put your own questions in here. And if this is getting built out, this will help people uh, uh, become maybe a go-to place. I don't know. It's really up to you. The other thing that I think is very important, as I said about trading itself, is right in here. In the trading Q&A, uh, what we have here is navigating market volatility. Uh, look at six trading strategies, da-da-da. Filtration of change of measures in the Heston model. Um, analytic valuation of complex callable or uh, puttable bonds. Different types of treasury, OMTR, OFFR value at risk so on so i'm adding that now to this forum as well so there's a lot of this and the more you know about it the better because here's the thing this is a very complicated field um i've given you now a couple of resources to uh move into here on my site quantlabsnet.com and more importantly is uh i'll be putting in even more stuff uh detailed in the paid portion so if you're interested if you think you have the built the chops to learn the futures and options what i could do or should say is check out under the store listing and just go under here and the three hour video introducing you to futures and options okay so this will walk you through the entire uh section of uh this and it leads into over 25 video of uh, videos detailing what HFT shops are doing outside of HFT shops, hedge funds, banks, whatnot, and how they take advantage of the futures and options um, market. I've done surveys. 75% of those uh, in trading are now wanting to move into futures and options because they know that, I mean, right now, equity is not doing too good in the U.S. Some foreign's doing okay. We could have a tough year. I don't know. It's hard to say. Same with crypto. It's too volatile. Knowing this stuff is going to put you leaps ahead of everybody else. And the other thing is, even for self-interest for trading, this is a brilliant way to, uh, to, to, to trade on your own, knowing all this technology. So this course is built for that. It's fairly affordable, only 27 pounds, which is about 40 US dollars approximately. Um, so that's pretty well it. Thanks for watching and uh, have yourselves a, a good day over and out.